Fred the Fighter, Wally the Wizard, and Connie the Cleric. They waited on the stairs, hardly daring to breathe, as Rachel the Rogue crept ahead, down into the darkness. A few moments later, Rachel returned and said, I found the bottom of the stairs. There's a bridge that extends with no rails across a chasm. I couldn't see the bottom of it. Ceiling flies away into darkness. The four companions looked at each other and they said, well, we gotta go on. We know that there must be something down here. And so they continue. And when they step out onto that bridge, they hear above them a sound like stone cracking in one place and then two places. And Connie the cleric, an elf, looks up and says, Gargoyles! This, friends, may be one way that your party is introduced to the Temple of Black Earth. Hey everybody, I am DM Galabond, and this is Lore Friday for October 30th, 2020. And indeed, we are talking about the Temple of Black Earth from the Princes of the Apocalypse campaign uh, that was published in 2015 by Wizards of the Coast. So let's go ahead and take a look at what this temple, uh, or what this uh, adventure is all about. All right, the um, Temple of the Black Earth is, again, one quadrant of the ancient uh, dwarven ruins of Tyre Bessel. And as we've done when we've looked at these temples before, we'll take a look at this. Uh, Temple of the Black Earth is this northeast quadrant here. And the little bridge that I described and the stairs that I described, that's up in this corner right here. Um, and it just so happens that on the map of Tyre Vessel, that is the first area that is described. So it's presumed that people would reach this by coming down from the Sacred Stone Monastery above, although all of the areas of Tyre Vessel interconnect. So somebody could come into any one of these quadrants and then if they succeed in making their way through they would eventually get through all four of them so uh you can actually enter from three different areas you can enter from that uh northeast northeast quadrant here you can enter from the uh flame uh temple of the eternal flame uh, to the west, or you can enter from the uh, Temple of Crushing Wave from the south into here. So that's the way. Uh, that's a way that you can get in there. All right. The complex has ceilings 15 feet high. Doors are stone slabs balanced on central pivots. Uh, double doors have iron hinges and swing in one direction or the other. Uh, chasm zigzag through this uh, part of Tyre Bessel, they range uh, from 100 to 200 feet deep. Uh, and then many areas are illuminated with uh, continual flame spells cast on torches in wall sconces. Uh, the rest of the area not illuminated by torches is dark. So uh, I've also gone ahead and highlighted the menu here, or the map here as we go through each of these sections of the thing. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the chasm here in the northeast in area B1. Uh, this zigzagging 10 foot wide bridge doesn't have railings and there are gargoyles lurking on ledges in the shadowy upper reaches of the cavern 
which is 50 feet higher than the bridge and 100 feet above the cavern floor. Uh, so the gargoyles will ignore anybody exiting the temple, but anybody who is a stranger and who doesn't either give the proper greeting or the uh, make the proper hand sign of the uh, temple is attacked by the gargoyles uh, here. So they, the gargoyles also try to push people off of the bridge, and the bridge is 50 feet above the floor. So you'll take some falling damage if you fall there. Uh, the chasm extends to the north over here. And then there's this curious little uh, ledge marked here that is actually a worked ledge by the prophet of elemental earth and we will find out why that is there later on uh, so marlos urnrail is the prophet and he has used stone shape to create that ledge all right uh there's ruined gates here in area b3 and um these gates were shaken off of their uh, shaken off their hinges by the same uh, seismic activity that caused these chasms and caused some of the other collapses and damage that you see on the map. Uh, there are arrow slits um, that are from. Uh, guard posts at B5 and B6. So arrow slits from here. Uh, but the, um, yeah, so B5 and B6. But there's not, um, they're, they're not necessarily manned right now. Uh, if the intruders are noticed, then they might be manned. So uh, characters that retreat will actually cause more guards to be placed in this area here. So they, um, and in the area of B4, which is this hall here, we will find several interesting creatures. Uh, there's four hobgoblins and a burrow shark named Nartham. Now, a burrow shark is a humanoid that has the curious distinction of being bonded to a bulet. Not a bueller, but a bulet. Uh, so now, for those of you who are not familiar, the bulet is the... Uh, creature that has been known uh, in uh, many editions as a land shark. Uh, this is a creature that burrows underground and then attacks by bursting up from the ground and using this big massive set of jaws here to uh, chomp down on its prey. So the how uh, the Black Earth cult actually bond riders to the Bulets so that the riders actually are able to burrow with the animal while riding on its back. Uh, very interesting type of thing here. Uh, I do not like it, and the reason I do not like it is because your players will see the NPCs doing it, and they will say, oh, I want one as a pet. I want one as a mount. I want to be able to burrow underground. And that's where you as a DM have to say, no. No, 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 no. They get that ability because they are evil, because they are cultists. There is a ritual. If you follow that ritual, every cleric in the Sword Coast is going to identify you as evil. And you're going to be outcast. 
and you're going to be in trouble. And trust me, it's just not worth it. So, no. That's what you have to do as a DM. <laughs> you have to learn the word no when your characters want to do something just because they see an NPC doing it. All right. Uh, there's cooking fires and bedrolls um, for the hobgoblins. And then um, this Narthrum is a really violent and short-tempered kind of person. Uh, you know, just a like a, a you know like that stereotypical guy in the movies that just is the the little guy that's in the bar that just wants to go and pick a fight with the um, biggest most muscle bound guy. Um, yeah, that's him. That's this burrow shark. That's what that's what he is. All right, uh, and then if those guys are defeated and the party doesn't go on and clean out the whole thing, then they will be uh, replaced with more and stronger uh, guard guardians there after a few hours. Okay, then there's the East Guard Room, which was this area over here. Uh, serves as the barracks and post of five Durgar. Uh, then there's Yarsha's burrow, and Yarsha is a um, is a, not a leader of the cult, but she's like just one step below a leader, and she would like to become a leader because she thinks the leader's an idiot. And uh, if you attack Yarsha and her guards, and if the guards look like they're about to die, Yarsha will turn on them and then try to parley with the party. Um, and she wants the party to try to get rid of her boss. Um, and uh, her boss is a second in command of the uh, cult, and that's what Yarsha wants to be. Um... Uh, then we go to the Gate Warden's Quarters. Gate Warden's Quarters is here in B7. So they use the uh, Black Earth Cultists use the room as a barrack. There's another burrow shark named uh, Dynath, a Black Earth Guard, and four cultists in the room. And they keep odd hours any time when D4 are sacked or sacked out in their bunks. Um, and then there's some treasure here. Then we come to the lair of the mud sorcerer. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Bloop, 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 bloop. Mud pit, bloop, bloop. Okay. Uh, lair and workroom of Miraj Vizan, an Earth Genasi and second in command for the cult of the Black Earth. Uh, now, um, Mirage uh, is kind of interesting because he uh, he practices both elemental earth and elemental water magic, and he reveres both of them. And he's actually kind of an advocate for an alliance between the earth cult and the water cult. Uh, that really hasn't caught on yet. And... Um, He's a supporter of the elemental cults because, man, they help me understand the fundamentals of elemental nature, man. It just, just really, 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 uh, you know, lets me tune into the magic, elemental magic. You know, that, that's, that's, that's really why I'm here, man. Um, and he has a stone golem with 102 hit points and no multi-tech ability. So that makes it a little bit of an easier enemy. But he takes that stone golem, makes it fight the party. Then he runs off to a distance to cast spells and try to save his butt. Save his own butt. All right. Uh, then there's the Broken Hall in Area 9. Um, there's a fissure caused by some of that seismic activity. And there are some big columns. And in here is basically the stable for the other bulets. 
There are three Bulets chained up here, and they are hungry. And if the party comes in there, doo -doo 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 -doo, well, they're about liable to get eaten. Uh, now, the Bulets are chained up, but uh, they do have a possibility to break the chains. Okay, this chasm here runs across several areas, and if you'll notice, there's a footpath that goes around the sides, but um, you have to get to the far side before you can find the path. And then at the end of the path, it goes around the north side. So um, party will have their work cut out for them if they want to traverse that path all the way around. Uh, there's... Uh, there's a couple of the places of note that it's adjacent to. Uh, one of them is this B-15, and there's a forge there. And this forge, as you can tell, has an open end to it. So if your party has a bunch of light sources and they go wandering over here, well, they're going to be seen by the guys in B-15, and they're probably going to raise some sort of an alarm. Uh, B-11 is the south passage leading to the Cult of the Crushing Wave. So right here. Uh, then let's see. Brug Norb's Lair. Area B-12. Brug Norb's Lair. Right down here. Well, Brug Norb is an Etten. Brug is the name of one of its heads, and Norb is the name of the other head. And it's... You know, this this guy is here for... You know, he's obviously a challenge for the party, but uh, he's also here as a little bit of comic relief. Because there's... Uh, There's a, uh, the doors on this each have a sign painted in very poor spelling. And one of them says, Norb's Rum, keep out Brug. And the other one says, Brug's Rum, Norb is stupid. So, uh, Brug, and Norm seem, or Brug and Norb seem to have a uh, argument about who owns the rum. And luckily, um, luckily that's something that the party doesn't have to worry too much about because the Etten is totally clueless. Um, if the party members identify themselves as members of the cult, oh, it will let them pass, but it will ask them for something. And so it will get cross with them if it doesn't. Uh, if they don't give it what it wants. And if they don't claim to be part of the cult, but they can fast talk some sort of excuse, they might even get Brugnor because he's that dumb to fight against the cult. Um, he's got kind of a loose truce with them right now, but the way he's written makes it sound like that's kind of malleable. Because he's really, really, really susceptible to being um, manipulated by a clever PC. All right, then we go to the hunting hall, which was actually the old refectory. Uh, where's number 13? 13, 13, 13, right here. Um, there's pastoral scenes from surface life with farms and, uh, and hunting, uh, scenes of hunting like waterfowl and things like that there. Uh, there's also a freshwater spring there. Then there's a torture chamber complete with some complete with a torturer and some victims. So equipped with, equipped with influence of torture to defeat to torture defeated enemies. Uh, then there's a a uh, stone melder named Heldorm, who is the torturer, and he has three uh, cultists assisting him. And Heldorm, the torturer, well, he's just... <laughs> he 
He's unbalanced, man. <laughs> oh, hey, guess what? We're going to be doing some torture today. And you know, I'm so excited that you're here because we're just going to see if we can't make you taller by putting you on the rack and stretching. <laughs> stretching you you know you're gonna have to have a new tailor because your pants are gonna be too short <laughs> okay that is um uh, that is held arm the torturer uh there's four prisoners there is a member of the cult who actually struck a priest a few days ago there's a thug in the service of the air cult the howling hatred cult and then there are two adventurers um, one uh, is a dwarf who just was hunting in the area and got captured the other one was an adventurer who came down here looking for wealth and got captured after the rest of his party got killed and then there's the forge we mentioned the forge before in area b15 right here and this uh there's black earth cultist there um and the master of the forge is a Tao. a Tao. okay and so for those of you who are not up on your uh, D, D monster lore the Tao is a the djinn that is associated with the elemental plane of earth and so it is forging um it is forging elemental devices for the cult and there's a there's actually an item that's completed now this dao is a true mercenary in every sense of the word the um Dao really doesn't care if anybody comes along and kills the cultists. Uh, the Dao will care if somebody tries to attack it. And the Dao will care if somebody tries to touch or take any of its items. Uh, the Dao will also show that it has not been paid an invoice for the item it has made yet. So if the party has some walking around change, they might be able to purchase that. Now, the uh, item that they can potentially purchase, uh, which they probably can't use yet, but it's supposed to be there. And as a DM, you might want to consider whether you're going to let this be the item that's there or whether you're going to put it in. No, wait a minute. I'm sorry. I take that back. Uh eighth level you're tier two so you can use rare items all right so uh claws of the umber hulk and they're gauntlets of iron uh forged in the shape of umber hulk's claws and you gain a burrowing speed of 20 feet and you can tunnel through solid rock at the rate of one foot per round so that's a pretty cool thing uh, to have uh then we have an armory Area B16 is this armory over here. And the armory uh, is the garrison of five ogres uh, with orders to let no one enter from the west without giving the pass sign. Uh, they have no orders to prevent people from leaving, although they challenge strangers who don't look like members of the cult. So if you defeat the uh, ogres, then an earth elemental Myrmidon will become the uh, guardian here. So then there is this stair that leads down. In a few weeks, we will talk about the area it leads to because it goes to area 11 of the Fane of the Eye. Um, it's kind of goes down from the earth elemental cult area down to the uh, earth elemental node far far below there are some and, oh and there's this also has an alarm spell on this uh 
when you walk across this bridge to get out here, there's an alarm spell on it, which will alert everybody in these barracks and anyone else you haven't yet killed. So there's a dozen cultists there. Um, but at any one time, there's only one Black Earth Guard and a Black Earth Priest uh, are stationed there. Um, there's guards that are sleeping in an armor and they have 10 AC and won't be able to help in time and to don their armor if the alarm is raised. So they, um, they could be a minor speed bump for the party. Then we have Statuary. B-19 is a statue to Ogremach, the elemental, or the prince of elemental earth. And there's a mess hall where the cultists all take their meals. All right, now, um, when you go into the mess hall, you, it's possible that you might see some cultists in the kitchen uh, or cultists there eating. And so you roll a d20 and whatever comes up, you see those. And you can see for the most part, 8 through 20, there's nobody there. Then there's an interesting set of uh statues that look like they are screaming in this area B-21 here. And really, those are former cultists because the leader of the cult of elemental air who is here now is a Medusa, Marlos Erlenrail. Now, in mythology, Medusa was a specific individual that was cursed by the gods for the crime of vanity, for thinking she was more beautiful than the gods. But in D&D, Medusas are a race. So there are Medusas male and female. And this is a boy Medusa. So make what you will of that. Um, and those statues there are former cultists that displeased him, so he let his hair do the talking, if you will. And yes, in D&D, &D, Medusas will turn you to stone if you look at them. All right, or if, if you meet their gaze, I guess. So the, he also has a very, very, very uh, powerful weapon called Iron Fang that uh, the party may be able to secure if they defeat him. And then, obviously, he has his private little inner sanctum, B-22. All the sumptuous furs, all the big carpets, you know, you got to tell, you got to tell Nene, you got to tell Felicia that they're just not, they are just not welcome here. Um, to quote Eddie Murphy from, I believe, Beverly Hills Cop. <laughs> I think that's where that comes from. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's an Eddie Murphy movie yeah, that I am that I am channeling there. All right. Uh, then he has quite a bit of silver, platinum, uh beautiful tapestry worth quite a bit of money, a musical instrument worth quite a bit of money, and a nice silk robe worth quite a bit of money, and he has a suit of elven chain. And then, f well, not, not quite finally, but over here in 23, you have a shrine of bleeding stone. And what this actually is, is this is actually um, a the domain of an elemental priest or a priest of elemental earth. And this priest has, in, has managed to uh, get a 
black pudding to live inside a porous black uh, or a porous obelisk and has chained a gnome sacrifice to said obelisk and as the party walks in um she's about to feed the gnome to her pet so uh, the party could be witness if they're very quiet as they enter uh, they could be witness to this black pudding oozing out over this gnome and starting to devour it uh probably a pretty grisly sight for most of the party members and something that's probably going to cause them to react but of course black puddings being black puddings uh, yeah you gotta be kind of careful what you do about that and then finally last but not least there's the hall of the sentinel uh, remember this guy over here who had the um who had the dwarven statues uh, the one that would protect him was a uh, golem that had uh, uh, spiked maces instead of hands. Well, there's another one of those same guys over here that is actually guarding the entrance to the Temple of Black Earth from the uh, Cult of the Eternal Flame. All right, and to wrap this all up, if you defeat the uh, you defeat Marlos and Mirage, both of them flee. Uh, Yarsha does her best to try to hold the cult together, but if she's defeated, uh, the cult is broken. The leaders are lost. The remaining Earth cultists retreat to the Fane of the Eye or leave the area entirely. And Zarja Deem, the um, or Zarva Deem the Dao will actually take all of her treasures and go home. And Brugnorb, the Etten, well, he stays there and he gets to rule the roost. Uh, unless, of course, the party decides to kill the Etten. That almost seems unfair, but, you know, Ettens are bad. So... That's a possibility. All right, everybody. I have been DM Galabon. This has been Lore Friday for October 30th, 2020. If you like everything we're doing here on the channel, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, click that post notification bell so that you can get notified every time new content drops on the channel. In the description down below, you will see... Uh, information about how you can follow me on all of my social media you'll also find out about the actual play live streams i do every week on my twitch channel you can come and watch those and if you have if a player if you've played through this or as a dm if you've run this particular adventure as part of the princes of the apocalypse what did you think of it now what i like about this is i i like the map I really like the map. This map is a very cool map. This map is a map that can be used in a lot of underground settings. It can be used in, you know, dwarven settlements. It can be used like in a drow settlement. It could be used as part of an underdark campaign. Um... Uh, you know, so many different things that you could do with this. And that goes for the entire city of but, uh, Tire Bessel. Uh, you can really just sort of uh, go through and uh, repopulate it with whatever you want and change the descriptions of the rooms to, you know, a different motif if you want to have them be something different than what the game offers all right everyone that is going to do it uh we really hope that you've enjoyed this and hope that we will see you back here next friday for another edition of lore friday good night everybody